Enterprise Systems Engineering is the discipline that applies systems engineering to the design of an enterprise. As a discipline, it includes a body of knowledge, principles, and processes tailored to the design of enterprise systems. Enterprise in ESE can be defined as a large-scale corporation which contain technology, human and development that represent as a system. It can be concluded as a multifaceted approach for an enterprise to develop which is especially useful for large and complicated organization. It accomplishes all of the tasks of traditional systems engineering. Further informed by an expansive view of the context poet in which the system under consideration are being developed, acquired, modified, maintained, or disposed of, enterprise systems engineering may be required when the complexity being faced which breaks down the assumptions upon which textbook systems engineering is based such as requirements being relatively stable and well understood, a system configuration that can be controlled, and a small, easily discernible set of stakeholders. Enterprise must produce different kind of analysis on the people, technology, components of the company in order to see the whole picture of the enterprise. As nowadays, enterprise becomes more complex with more problems and people to deal with, it is important to integrate the system in order to reach a higher standard or level for the business. Elements of ESE There are four important elements in order for enterprise system engineering to work. It includes development through adaption, strategic technical planning, enterprise governance and ESE processes. Development through adaptation, it is a justified way to compromise with the problems and obstacles in complex systems. As time goes by, the environment will change and it needs adaptation in order to develop continuously. To develop through adaption, it experiences different stages. For example, mobile phone has gone through quite a few adaptations in its evolutionary development from the past. When it first released, the size of the phone is enormous, while since the generation changes, phone becomes smaller. Also, it developed from 1G to 4G for wireless network which makes everything goes quicker and faster and more convenient. To sum up, it refers to the process of composing a diversity of innovative ideas and choices to the enterprise and select the one that will be successful for the next generation. Strategic Technical Planning The strategic technical planning gives the enterprise the picture of their aim and objectives in the future and also an assessment on the process of organization. It brings a balance of assimilation and modernization to the enterprise. It has different components for STP, Mission Statement, Needs Assessment, Technology Descriptions and Goal Statement, Hardware and Software Requirement. Budget Plan, Human Resources, Enterprise Governance, it is defined as the set of responsibilities and practices exercised by the board and executive management with the goal of providing strategic direction, ensuring that objectives are achieved, ascertaining that risks are managed appropriately and verifying that the organization's resources are used responsibly, according to Enterprise governance includes two aspects which are corporate governance and business governance. It is essential to understand the company and to know what must be done in order to succeed. It allows us to make the right decision on the choice of CEO and executives for the company, and also to identify the risks of the company. Processes of ESE There are four different steps in the enterprise system engineering process. It includes technology planning, capabilities-based engineering analysis, enterprise architecture and enterprise analysis and assessment. Technology planning It is a step that's searching and looking for key technologies for the enterprise. The aim of this step is to determine and associate all the innovative ideas and choose the technology that are useful for the enterprise to develop in a sustainable way. Technology needs we have to identify and look for the trend of the technology to decide what technology the company needs. It is important to understand what each of the technology can be achieved and will the characteristic of the technology fits in the company well. There are loads of technology-based decision need to be taken by the company such as deciding which computers to use, 
which software is suitable and useful for the company, how to build up a system to back up all the customer data or essential statistics for the company with high security capabilities-based engineering analysis. It is an analysis method that focus on the essential elements that whole enterprise needs. It is a scheme that target the innovation and evolution of the capabilities. There is a set of essential steps for the analysis. The activities are dependent and it is conducted iteratively. Purpose formulation assess stakeholders' interest, to understand what the stakeholders want and like. Specify outcome spaces, to find solutions for several conditions and the goal for the operations. Frame capability portfolios, to collect all the fundamental elements. Exploratory analysis assess performance and cost to identify the performance and cost in different conditions and find solutions to improve. Explore concepts, to search for new concepts and transform advanced capabilities. Determine the need for more variety, to examine the risks and chances and decide whether new ways are needed. Evolutionary planning assess enterprise impacts, to investigate the effects on the enterprise in technical and capability aspects. Examine evolution strategies, to explore and construct more strategies and evolution route. Develop Capability Roadmap Roadmap is a plan for the capability area which includes analysis and decision-making which is a tool for assessment and development for the enterprise. Enterprise Architecture It is a model that illustrates the vision, network and framework of an organization. There are four aspects according to Microsoft's Michael Platt which are the perspective of business, application, information and technology. The diagram beside shows that structure of the enterprise architecture. The benefits of this step are improvement of the decision-making for enterprise, increases the efficiency on the IT aspects and also minimize the loss of the organization, business, the strategies and process by the operation of business, application, interaction and communication along with the process used in the company. Information, the logical data and statistics that the organization required to run properly and actively. Technology, the software and hardware and different operation systems that used in the company. All the elements are dependent and rely on each other in order to build the infrastructure. Enterprise analysis and assessment Enterprise analysis and assessment aim to find out if the enterprise is going to the right direction and help to do the correct decisions for the organization. It is strong advice to link with enterprise opportunity and risk assessment. There are also qualities that are required for this step such as aware of the suitable and capable technologies, to know and understand about C2 issues and also the background picture of modeling and simulation. There are various activities and actions for this event. Multi-scale analysis, early and continuous warfighter operational assessment. Lightweight, portable M&S-based C2 capability representations. Developmental software versions available for assessment. Minimal infrastructure. Flexible modeling and simulation. Operator in the loop. And hardware in the loop capabilities. Inline. Continuous performance monitoring and selective forensics. To see and ESE. To see refers to traditional system engineering which is a term to be defined as an engineering subsystems. To see to see are composed and constructed by external designer. It is a stable system which it won't change automatically. Operation and development are independent with each other. Most of the components exclude people which therefore people do not play an important role in it. There are massive machines which have expected conduct. There are differences between to see and ESE. There are survey results comparing both of them. The survey results shown that TSE and ESE is complementary and interdependent with each other which ESE has a higher rating while TSE could also be a hidden element for ESE. So the combination of TSE and ESE will be ideal for an enterprise in this generation. Application of ESE 
There are two types of EESE application which are Information Enterprise System Engineering and Social Enterprise System Engineering. Information Enterprise System Engineering It is a system that builds up to meet the requirements and expectations of different stakeholders in the organization. There must be an input device to collect the information and output device to satisfy the information needs. There are three different aspects for the framework of IESE functional view, topology view, physical view. Also, there are different rules for the IESE model, interchangeable point of view, detailed views and well displayed, showing the specific method, solution and techniques, consistent views, supported viewpoints. Social Enterprise System Engineering It is described as a frame that involves of planning, analyzing, mapping and drawing network of the process for enterprises and stakeholders. On the top of that, it creates social value for the entrepreneurship and will explore and focus on the social and societal issues. It forms a connection between social enterprise and system engineering. There is a social enterprise systems engineering V model. In this model, there are two or more social elements established based on the system engineering framework. For example, more social interface analysis that review stakeholders' requirements. More activities and interactions between stakeholder to exchange opinions. Opportunity and risk management. There are opportunities and risks in ESE and they have to be aggressive in seeking opportunities and also finding ways to avoid or minimize the risks. Opportunity is a trigger element that may lead to the accomplishment of objectives. Risk is a potential occurrence and will affect the performance of the entire system. There are several reasons for the importance of risk management. To identify the risks beforehand which can prepare actions to prevent or minimize the risks. Since risks can cost the enterprise which determine the risk events can reduce the amount of loss. Help to know how to allocate the human or technology resources in order avoid the most critical risks. There are few steps in enterprise risk and opportunity management process. Prepare the risk and opportunity plan. Select team and representatives. Identify risks. Complete risk statements for each risk. Identify opportunities. People that work at tactical level and manage you must understand the opportunities in order to take a further action. Evaluate the enterprise risks and opportunities to decide which is more critical and vital. Develop the plan. Develop after identification and evaluation with different strategies.